Hello and welcome to another episode of Korea TV, brought to you by the South African Civil Aviation Authority, keeping you safe in the sky as always. My name is Larato and I'll be your host today. Today, we will be focusing on the ground crew found at the airport. Now, if you're like me and you wonder what happens behind the scenes, this is the episode for you. Today's guests, I've got two lovely ladies who will be telling us more about what really happens when we board our flights. Carmen, I will start with you. Um, I would like you just to tell the viewers about yourself, who you are, just introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Carmen Fauré. Um, I'm a ground staff agent for Lyft Airlines. This year, I'll be 18 years in the aviation industry. And I'm from a small town called Harabrinet, but I'm residing now in the East End in Boxburg. Lovely. And Faith? Hi, my name is Faith Mshambi. I'm a flight operations officer for also one of the airlines, in line with also being a, a pilot. I'm from the East Strand, and I've been in the aviation industry for plus minus 10 years. Oh, wow. So we've got the two lovely ladies <laughs> who've been in the aviation game for a while. That's very interesting. So today, um, like I've introduced, our, our episode today is basically um, on ground crew, and you guys have an extensive background of that. And um, I would like us just to touch into that and just tell me how you got into the aviation industry and how you got into your position at this point. So Carmen, I'll start with you. It's actually funny. I went for a learnership and then after my six months, I was taken by the airline and ever since I've been in the aviation industry. Oh wow, so you've loved it and, and you've I just love it. continued it's, growing yes. from there and I'm sure it's very informative and I can yes. imagine today's episode you will definitely give insights on what um, you guys really do behind the scenes. And Faith? Uh, initially, I started off as a pilot, did my pilot training, and after obtaining my pilot license, I asked myself, is there more to it? And then, interesting enough, there was a post for a flight operations officer, and uh, intriguing enough, because I was interested in something else besides flying, I actually uh, applied for operations officer and then got the job and an opportunity to be a flight operations officer. That's very interesting. So, like viewers, like I've said, um, the ground crew that we'll be focusing on today, we will start with Carmen, who's going to tell us more about the customer service when you and I enter the airport, from checking in to going to the correct uh, gate to boarding the aircraft. Carmen will be telling us more about what really happens. Carmen, can you just please take us through the process from Lerato coming into the um, airport, checking in, buying a flight ticket, what really happens? So basically, um, when you enter the airport and you have an got a ticket, we start off by selling you a ticket, then you proceed to check in where you hand over your ID, we need to check if it's a correct passenger inside, in front of us, mm -hmm. and then from there, I'll ask you a few security questions with regards to your bags, mm -hmm. and take the bags, offer you assistance if needed, mm -hmm. and also ask if you need a specific seat, yeah. and after that, um, I'll send your bag, explain to you that you'll receive your bag in Durban. It's going on the same or in what, wherever you're going, whatever yeah. destination you're going. Yeah. And that you will, um, it's going on the same flight with you. Mm -hmm. And from there, I'll generate your boarding pass with your name on your flight details, mm -hmm. the boarding time, as well as the gate and explain to you what time the gate's closed mm -hmm. and what time you need to be at the gate mm -hmm. and ensure that you understand all the security and protocol um, at the airport. Then I direct you to the boarding gates. Um, mm -hmm. It's just after the security point. Okay. And from there, the time the flight commence boarding, you'll be at the gate, boarding the flight, ensure everyone is on boarded on the aircraft. So you, I'm, I'm listening to you telling me, and it's a lot. It's a lot that's really going on. How, how more lo long does it take for you to tell somebody like me, a first timer in the airport, who doesn't know where to go, who doesn't know what to do? How long does this process usually take for me, from checking in to boarding my flight? How does, how long does it usually take? It's quite a fast, but it needs to be an efficient um, process because it normally takes like say up to a minute to two minutes oh, wow, to okay. interact. Because remember, there's it's a a lot of flights, there's yes. a lot of passengers that yes. need to be checked in. So I just need to ensure that you understand what I'm explaining to you mm -hmm. and to make sure that you do get to the proper, the right gate and yeah. board your flight. 
Okay, so I just want to dive a little bit into, you know, uh, uh, for example, if I was to lose, if I was to miss my flight, what happens if I was to miss my flight? I mean, my bag has gone to Durban, I've missed my flight. What what then happens if you don't mind taking me through that process? Okay, um, unfortunately, if you miss the flight, your bag will remain behind with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Because um, it's against the policies and procedures mm -hmm. to allow a bag to travel without the owner. So mm -hmm. your bag gets offloaded and you get offloaded from the flight, then we direct you back to the ticket office mm -hmm. to try and rebook yourself on the next available flight. Oh, wow. Oh, I always thought that the bag goes and then I'll follow it afterwards. Okay. Oh, wow. That's actually very interesting. So um, from the time I've boarded my flight, um, then what happens then afterwards um, once you've ensured that for that specific aircraft, everybody's boarded their flights, what then happens behind the scenes? Okay, behind the scenes, once the flight is boarded, crew do, does their things, we close the doors, mm -hmm. they take it further from there, then flight ops does would their take thing. over. Yeah, they so take I would over. go over to Faith to on Faith, that yes. <laughs> Faith to hotel. So that's very interesting. So Faith, I mean, now I'm in the aircraft, I'm sitting at the window seat. I mean, everybody loves the window seat. I'm sitting at the window seat, I look out, and there's a lot of people on on the fr on the grounds and they are doing quite a lot of work these carriages going up and down there are people walking up and down if you don't mind me asking what really is entailed into that what are those people doing what are the ground crew doing true uh with flight operations that's actually where my work starts so from the time you're actually at the gate waiting or actually looking outside and seeing your pl the plane parking by the parking bay basically even that even that parking bay flight operations is actually responsible. So we're responsible for making sure that when they land, it's not like a car where you just scout for parking and you park in. We tell them which parking bay they need to actually park at okay. so that the relevant uh, passengers are waiting for the, air, uh, for, for the aircraft at the correct parking bay. Mm -hmm. And then also the air stairs mm -hmm. that you actually take, whether it's the, the, the stairs on the ground or mm -hmm. the air stairs, Flight operations uh, uh, officers are responsible for making sure that when the plane lands, mm -hmm. there are stays that are available for that specific flight for those passengers to actually board the aircraft. Oh, wow, and okay. as you've mentioned, once you're se seated in your aircraft, you're yeah. sitting there, you're probably thinking we're just waiting for the passengers to yes. all sit down. But it's actually busy, like you're mentioning. So from the time you give your bags to Carmen, and Carmen has mentioned that ground crew actually handles that, yeah. we actually make sure that those people actually load the actual bags in the correct aircraft. Mm -hmm. But not only that, there is fuel that has to be arranged that needs to be boarded as, as well. There's mm -hmm. passengers. Remember, all of this is weight contributing. Mm. A pilot doesn't have time to actually calculate all that. Flight operations, that's where it comes in. Oh, wow. There's flight loading. We have to make sure that the actual the aircraft is in the correct weight. It's not mm -hmm. too heavy in front or too heavy at the back, wow. so that actually you you have a safe flight. Remember, like adhering yes. to CA, keeping you safe in the skies as well. Oh, wow. So it becomes our responsibility from the time you board the aircraft mm -hmm. all the way to the pilot. How does the pilot get to their destination? Flight operations inspector. Mm -hmm. It's important that we make sure that the pilots, an hour before their flight, they have their flight plans. They know their weather from departure to the destination. They know which runway possibly that they will get to their destination so that it's a smooth transition for you guys, all passengers, mm. from the time they board until you actually land at your destination. That's actually quite a lot because, I mean, in my head as a normal traveling passenger, I, I would be in an aircraft and it would take off and then we'd be up in the air and then we land and I don't I didn't know that that actually there's quite a lot that goes into ensuring that the that the flight is smooth on itself so I heard you speaking more about um, the weight of the aircraft and so all of that flight operations um, handles that um, as well as with the with the crew yes so before a pilot can actually take off because the pilot is responsible for the flight they need to make sure that the aircraft is actually correctly uh, loaded. Mm -hmm. So we have load control, which is a separate department. They'll okay. make sure that after everything is loaded, which mm -hmm. is the fuel, which is the food that you're going to have on flight, the actual passengers are not forgetting your, your bags. Mm -hmm. Is it correctly loaded? If it, it is, thank you. They send it to flight operations officer. We mm -hmm. send it to the pilot. The pilot, along with the flight pack that we have sent uh, send the pilot, they check that everything is according to the weight and balance of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And then only upon that, then the pilot will say, yes, we are good to go, off, or we're good to go. And then chocks off, then you push back, ready for the flight ahead. Wow. So tell me, how long does this process take um, when all the ground crew is doing their work on the ground, ensuring that our bags are in the aircraft, ensuring the food is in the aircraft, ensuring that everybody has 
gotten onto the aircraft. How does this um, process, how long does this process take? We try to make it as quick as possible. And with that, with flight operations, it's all about planning. We don't plan from the time the plane is actually parked and you're actually boarding. Yes. It takes a day. A oh, day wow. before, make sure you, you, for the first flight going out in the morning, is the plane at the correct parking bay? Okay. Is there a technician to make sure that the aircraft is good to go? Okay. Is the pilot happy with the aircraft? Mm. The cabin crew, are they organized for the day? So basically with more crew, it's all about interacting with different aspects or different departments mm -hmm. to make sure that there's a smooth transition. So you're looking at more or less the turnaround time. Mm -hmm. You can look at 15 minutes. It can wow. be longer, but with airlines who have been experienced or exposed, okay. the turnaround time, it's very important and obviously that's where the passengers actually look into that that the yes. turnaround time is actually quicker and that's how they book their flights as well yes definitely i'm very impressed because if you're saying with what you've told me in terms of the amount of work that goes into ensuring that this aircraft is um going up into the sky safely i mean for me the explanation sounds like it's a tedious and timeless job where it takes almost an hour two hours but if you're saying it's within 15 minutes that's very impressive so I'm gonna come back to you, Carmen, on this one. Once we are up in the air and um, we land in Durban, for example, um, take me through that process once the passengers land and now we need to go get our bags. How does that process work? Okay. So basically what happens, we, once the aircraft lands, um, we wait like for flight ops to everyone, wait for thumbs up, then the doors get, op uh, they open the doors of the aircraft. Yeah. Then one of us escort the passengers to the arrivals hall. Mm -hmm. um, there's fit sports that indicates the flight number, what uh, the destination, uh, where it comes from. Yeah. And then it states which carousel the bag will come out. Okay. So you need to wait there and ensure everyone got their bags. Mm -hmm. If there's any issues, then you need to, and damages to passengers' bags, yeah. you open a file. And then from there, once you've opened the file, you just advise the passenger that you'll be in contact with the passenger. Mm -hmm. And then from there, everyone just exit their arrivals all once they have their bags. Okay, that's very interesting. Tell me a little bit more about, for example, if a passenger's bag is damaged, um, how long does it take to resolve that issue with the passenger? Or if a passenger's bag is lost, because I know sometimes that can happen. Okay, um, you know, sometimes what mostly happens is Sometimes the bag was not loaded. It didn't make it on time. For instance, mm -hmm. when a passenger is late for the flight okay. and the bag was accepted. Okay. So in that scenario, we will normally put the bag on the next flight Okay. Um, to get the bag to the passenger. Okay. But if a passenger's bag is damaged, it depends mm -hmm. what type of bag it is. Okay. If it's a hard shell bag, okay. most of the airlines doesn't cover hard shell bags oh, because wow. it breaks easily. Okay. So it all depends what the situation is oh. but it it gets resolved within say a time frame of a day two days maximum mm -hmm. oh yes. wow that's actually very interesting i didn't know that because i mean so it basically depends on what bag i have as well yes because you need to read the terms and conditions under the luggage <laughs> policy once you make a booking <laughs> something that we hardly do, do yes. we just want to board the plane yeah. and fly to our next destination that's so. actually very interesting and in instances can you give me maybe an example where um a passenger's bag has been damaged and what your guys resolution was or how best you guys try to assist the uh, customer a passenger's bag is damaged the passenger fell in the form mm -hmm. and then we try and assist the passenger by we have loaner bags okay so the passenger just pack uh, clothing over in the loaner bag oh okay and if the bag is fixable we get um we've we do have a company that does our bags for us okay. so we just wait on them to find out if the, we can fix it mm -hmm. or if it needs to be replaced mm -hmm. and then the communication go from there to say, okay, mm -hmm. how long it will take to fix the bag. Okay. When can the passenger bring the bag back and we'll give the bag, uh, replace their bag. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not fixable, what is the way forward? Oh, wow. That's actually very so, interesting. Like, um, will we compensate, but based on the situation. Yeah, that's interesting. Over to you, Faith, as well. Once we've landed, um, what process does flight operations come into once we have landed, for example, in Durban? Um, where do you guys come into this instance as well? Okay. It's very important as well because, remember, we're also looking, like you mentioned, the turnaround time. Mm -hmm. So just prior to the aircraft landing that side, we have to organize their parking bay at the destination airport so that when they land, they don't go scattering around. They know which parking bay they need to 
uh, actually park the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Also with that, we have to make sure that the stairs are also ready on the destination side. Mm -hmm. Also another thing we look at at flight operations is if there's old people in wheelchairs, if there is minor passengers, we need to arrange at the destination side there as well, that is okay. there's someone who's going to accompany the actual minors or if we need to get wheelchairs ready for certain number of uh, passengers that have been on board on that side as well. Mm. We also have to make sure that we have the the crew ready for that side to, dis to, to disembark the, the, the passengers, but not only that, also refueling the aircraft, loading more food so that whenever the turnaround time and more passengers actually embark the aircraft, it's ready and it's a smooth transition mm. from the passenger disembarking to the passengers also coming back, ensuring the pilot as well. Mm -hmm. The flight plan is ready to come back mm -hmm. and everything is good to go. Okay, so um, that's actually very interesting. Um, so just tell me a little bit more about um, how you guys got, what, what's the most that you really love? What's the one thing that you really enjoy about your job, Carmen? To be honest with you, there's a lot of moments. <laughs> um, what I love about my job is the fact that I, lead, uh, that I interact with different people every mm -hmm. day. And um, my team is a great team to work with. Um, the airline that I work for is best airline to work for. Okay, on. wow. <laughs> so basically for me, getting up every day, going out, ensuring that flights depart on time and arrive on time and give that 100% customer service towards passengers. Yeah. That's the best thing for me. I love that. Faith in you, what would you say you, what's the most thing that you really, really enjoy about your job? I think with flight operations uh, officers, we always saw ourselves as the conductors of an orchestra. Mm. There's different instruments and there's different, but what actually entails was the harmony of it. Okay. And that harmony is based on the actual conductor. Mm. So we saw ourselves as conductors and it was very nice interacting with different departments. You speak to technicians, yeah. you speak to customer services, yeah. you speak to, to, to uh, uh, the sky chefs yeah. who needs to load the food. So basically being able to interact with everyone, even when there's a delay, that speedy rush judgment of you go there, you come here, yes. take out the standby aircraft. So basically being a conductor, that's that was the best part uh, but you obviously so it's the best after the delay and yes. everything goes smoothly as long as the passengers are happy that's actually the best part of myself i was of actually going future. to come to that now i actually want to <laughs> ask you ladies as well i'm going to pose this question what is the most challenging part of your job <laughs> <laughs> delays <laughs> delays i suppose but um what delays it's not that low, uh, it's not that challenging. Okay. And it all goes with the fact that you're ensuring the passengers get safe on the other side yes. and passengers understand what the situation is. Yes. And um, the, you need to be open to the passengers to explain to them what's going on. Yes. Ensure them that they will get to their destination safe mm. and just make sure they're happy. As long as they are happy, you are happy. It's, a, it's rough, but at yes. the end, you know... Once, if you see your passenger smiles and they yes. get on the flight, because remember, everything is word of mouth. But if you can master the delay 100%. and still make passengers smile, then exactly. you know you're doing something good. And tell me, how do you ensure that you um, ensure that a, 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 a frustrated customer is put at ease in terms of um, whatever they may be going through or feeling at that point? How do you ensure it is common working on a daily basis? How do you ensure that your, your customer is happy and they put at ease um, once a frustrated moment happens? Um, what I always do is I put myself in the person's shoes and understand where the person is coming from. Mm. So um, then more, that way you will understand more how to handle the situation. Yeah. So and then just interact with the passenger, um, calm him down, reassure yeah. him that everything will be fine and then just make sure that you give them the best service that you can. 100% ensuring mm -hmm. that they are feeling safe, safe at the end of the day. day. And yeah. Faith, can you tell me, what would you what would you say is your challenge? Like what are challenges that you face um, when in the flight operations? I think with flight operations, it has to be the hours that you work. Because mm. like I said, a conductor cannot leave and required to actually sing on its own. So you literally have to be there throughout your whole sh uh, the whole shift. Mm. You're sitting behind a desk. It's either you're monitoring, you're doing flight log, yeah. checking up on the flight, you're checking up on the pilot, yeah. you're checking up on the weather, 
on the destination and mm. any and every other aspect that actually relates and deals with the pilot. Yeah. So you need to be behind the desk, behind that computer, behind that phone the whole time. So and but you only feel the tiredness after your shift. That it was very actually was tiresome <laughs> because you're so busy at the moment. You don't have time to actually feel tired. You have a snack just behind sure. the the desk, but it's 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 rewarding actually yeah. seeing the passengers get to their destination safe mm. is actually the most rewarding aspect of it. Mm. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, as you know, because it's a career TV, we have a lot of young viewers watching um, this channel, watching this episode perhaps. And I just want us to dive a little bit more into if I am a young person out there and I want to be in the aviation industry, uh, maybe I want to go into customer service, maybe I want to go into flight operations. What is the um, main things that you would think one needs to have um, when embarking into that journey? I'll start with you, Carmen. Okay, um, I'll say it's mostly when you're at school, there's, it's travel and tourism. Okay. But I've come across there's a lot of uh, aviation schools mm -hmm. who does do courses in ground staff. Okay. It's basically they doing the passenger handling, cargo handling, mm -hmm. security and protocol, and then customer service. Okay. So, so customer uh, service is, is, is basically, it, it's, it's general, general, you know what I mean? You know, you could go from yeah. any entail of customer, customer service, service, but ensuring that you actually know how to work with people is the main element. Yes, you need to master customer service. That's very interesting. And Faith, what would you say to um, a young person out there who wants to go into the flight operations department? Where would they start? <laughs> I think also it's starting internally. Are yeah. you a people's person? Okay. Because you're interacting not only with your own people in the mm -hmm. department, but also the airport. Mm -hmm. You might not be interacting with passengers, but other departments as well. Finding that synergy is very important. And obviously, everyone talks to you, you talk to them back. So having that people skills is very important yes. in, to have it. Yes. And then with regards to flight operations officer or flight dispatch, there are institutions in South Africa that you can actually search mm -hmm. on Google and they provide... Uh, courses for okay. you to actually be a, fl a certified flight dispatch or flight oper uh, operations officer that they can actually go to as well. Okay, that's very yes. interesting. And let's maybe dive a little bit deeper into if I am a high school student, the subjects that I would need to do or the subjects that I'm carrying on, um, how do I know that the subjects that I'm studying currently will take me into the aviation path, maybe flight operations, customer service at the airport, and not just um, customer service at the airport, but anything else that um, somebody can dive into at the airport? Yes, I've explained to you. Mm. I've seen now at school, um, they have the uh, opportunity to choose travel and tourism as a subject yeah. at school, at high school. Yeah. So that will be your... Your guide, main your guide. Business. Okay, and Faith? Uh, maths and science is vitally important. It's all mm -hmm. about calculating, minusing all the time. And also, most importantly, I can't stress enough, <laughs> English <laughs> is also very important because you're interacting with people. So basically, clear guidance and clear understanding is, is of vital with flight operations because anything that might go wrong or mis someone misinterpreting you, mm. it might actually go south instead 100%. of the, the direction that you actually want. So taking your maths and science, I can actually encourage it yes. immensely. Yes. Also not forgetting English. Yeah, no, I, I, I thank you so much, ladies, because the subjects that you actually said, they are very, they are subjects that at the end of the day, um, I'm understanding that you can go into many various um, career paths in aviation. So I think the key is math, science, tourism. That's definitely, it will take you far. So thank you so much. And just before we close off, I just want you to um, give our young people out there just words of encouragement if they want to join, you know, the customer service side, the operation side of aviation, you know, what is the one um, or many words that you can just give them guidance, you know, um, and just words of encouragement. Okay, um, what I would like to say to the young ones is never let anyone dim your light. There's always a star within everyone. Love that. And always remember hard work and patience mm -hmm. and sacrifices, it pays off at the end. I love that. Thank you so much, Carmen. And Faith? I think the motivation I've always had from our actually former president, Nelson Mandela, it mm. always seems impossible until it's done. No one was born a flight operations officer. True. You can learn to become one yes. and you can work and excel in your craft. Yeah. It's always impossible. 
always seems impossible until it's done. I love it. Thank you so much, ladies. And thank you so much for really shedding light on something that some of us take for granted. You know, I mean, like I said, I come into an airport, I get my boarding pass, I get into the airplane and I land. And I never really um, take time to understand what goes behind the back, uh, background. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for you guys to actually share insights and information to everybody who will be watching this episode, you know. Um, so thank you very much. And um, to the viewers out there, I hope this episode has been absolutely informative. And as you can tell that there's a lot that goes into when we are flying, when we are walking at the airport, for example, or even when our bags get lost, there's actually a lot that goes into um, ensuring that what we want and how our how we are satisfied at the end of the day as um, the customers of the airports and airlines. So um, just to keep this conversation going, do make sure you ensure that you are commenting um, down below in the comments below. Ensure that you subscribe to all our um, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, ensuring that you keep the conversation going. If there's any other questions, ensure that you put them down and we definitely will get back to you. And like I said, folks, this was another wonderful episode brought to you by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. I'm your host, Lerato, signing out.